Welcome back to your introduction to watercolor for beginners. This video is part of a series that I have been releasing, so be sure to look at the description below. And if you want to start at the beginning, the videos are all listed in order just to make things nice and easy for you. This segment is all about how to set up your watercolor palette. One of the awesome parts about starting off on a new journey with a new medium is having a fresh new palette and I'm going to take you through how I like to set up my palette. This is the setup that I've been using for over 20 years. It's really important to choose palettes that have really deep wells and enough wells to accommodate the same number of pigments or even more wells if possible. These are all artist grade paints, but of course if you're starting out, you may want to just stick with student brands. The ones that I would recommend are all linked below in the description. I'll have a selection of artist and student brand paints so you can choose something to suit your budget. They're not all created equal so definitely um, have a look at the list that I've included below. If you're starting with student grade paints, I highly recommend beginning with paints that come out of the tube as opposed to dried pan paints. You can control the amount of water to paint ratio. You get a much stronger saturation of color and this leads to a lot less frustration and a much better watercolor experience overall. The cool thing about watercolor is that even when the paints dry, so for instance, I have paint that has been in this palette for weeks, I can just spray it with a little bit of water and that will wake up the color and reactivate it again. Now this is an old plastic palette of mine um, and I have gone through many, many of these, so I thought it was time to upgrade, even though this is quite a heavy duty palette, sometimes it gets banged around and it does stain because it's plastic. A plastic palette is absolutely fine if you're just starting out, but I thought I would show you on a nice, fresh, clean slate so you can see the amount of color that I put out and how it mixes. Today, setting up my very gorgeous, heavy duty porcelain palette by Meaden, and this has 17 wells and large mixing spaces. One of the biggest problems that people run into is they simply don't have enough pigment squeezed out. And when you're working with tiny little amounts of pigment and skimping on the amount of paint in your palette is going to have a direct effect on the saturation levels of um, color on your painting. So make sure that you squeeze out enough. The colors in my palette are made up of transparent and semi-transparent pigments. This for me is a really wonderful way to paint because I can work with glazes, which provides a really luminous result. For me, in the style in which I paint, I can really build the watercolor and I can usually achieve five to six glazes without any colors looking muddy or opaque or overworked. So that is the secret to having really transparent and luminous results where the light passes through rather than bouncing off of opaque colors. I have more videos that I will link below or you can check out my channel all about opacity, transparency, and some color theory. I like setting up my colors in my palette almost like a color wheel or a rainbow so that if I do get any spillover into adjacent wells, at least there's not a big leap and the chances of the color turning muddy on me are pretty slim. So the first color that I'm putting out is my burnt umber. That is how much I put out in my palette. Let's have a closer look. So people often ask me, how much do I put out? It's kind of hard to say exactly, but it is about a teaspoonful and it's quite saturated um, and the, the well is quite deep. Now, the cool thing about this is that with the um, three quarter of an inch edge here, I will never have any of this pigment 
spill out into the mixing space. So these are the wells in which I will keep my pigment. And whenever it runs low, I will just refill it. And again, this can dry out, that's not a problem. Now I'm going to put out the same amount of burnt sienna. Again, all of these colors are linked in the description below. This is raw sienna. This is my Hansa yellow light, my gamboge, which is kind of like a cadmium yellow medium, a permanent red, which is my favorite transparent red. It's similar to a vermilion or a cadmium red in color, except that it's perfectly transparent. Here is alizarin crimson, nice dark deep red, a good staple. And for my pinks, I use a lot of permanent rose. I really love this particular hue. This is by Windsor Newton. This is their Opera Rose. And Da Vinci has their own brand equivalent, which is Opus Pink. Now some colors are simply impossible to mix. And this would be one of them. There is no way, no matter how much experience you have, you will never be able to reproduce this. This is like a completely um, artificial color, but man, does it ever sing, especially when you're doing uh, florals. Now this tube is a little bit dried up, and so I might as well show you what I do to access all the good stuff inside. As long as it feels a little bit squishy inside of the tube, your dried up watercolor is still completely viable and useful, so you might as well get at it. Remember that when you squeeze out the paint into your palette, even if it dries up in your palette, just spraying it with a little bit of water will wake it back up. So it's better to have it dry out in your palette than dry out in the tube, which is what is happening to this one. I can see just by squeezing it that nothing's coming out. So let's get at that good stuff. So I'm just going to use a pair of scissors. You can use a utility knife or an X-Acto knife. So you can see that it's still very liquidy in there. And luckily it's at the bottom, but you can also split it up through the side if you ever needed to get at um, the pigment. Let's say the bottom and the top entry points were dried up. All the squishy stuff in the middle, you would just sort of gut it like a fish, <laughs> slice it down the middle and squeeze it out. But fortunately for me, this is still liquid in here. For more tips and tricks on how to get at dried up tubes of paint, or stubborn caps that won't come off, or ooey gooey weird stuff coming out of your tubes, check out the video link below my watercolor tube SOS. The next color that I like to use is Da Vinci Violet. Now this is similar to um, a dioxazine violet or a Windsor Violet. This is just Da Vinci's brand equivalent. Then I'm using Ultramarine Blue. This is a real go-to color for me. You can see how generous I'm being with filling each one of these wells. Prussian blue is my next blue. It's like a dark, deep denim blue. Phthalo blue, super potent color. Again, more information on some of the properties of these colors can be found in the link descriptions below. Sap green is my favorite earthy green and easily mixed. Hooker's Green Dark. Now for me, I go with the one that's labeled dark. In the case of Da Vinci, they indicate right on the tube that it is dark. Some other brands might have Hooker's Green, but um, it might say deep, it's the same thing. But for me, I really like the dark pine blue-green blue quality that the Hooker's Green Dark has. It's very different from regular Hooker's Green. Of course, once you have squeezed out all of your paints, it's important to put the caps back on. Just make sure that you are threading the lid correctly. If it goes on crooked like this, it's surely going to um, dry out. So just take a soft rag and wipe the threading around the tube opening if your cap's not going on straight. Now, if you've accidentally squeezed too much out of your tube of paint, how do you get it back into the tube? Well, I usually just try to squeeze the edges or give it a twist to see if it can get vacuumed back in. 
we'll hope for the best. So you can see just by kind of squeezing it and twisting it occasionally, you can kind of suck it back into the tube. Of course, if that doesn't work, you can just wipe the excess off into your palette. So that's it, folks. I have laid out my palette and you can see how generous all of the colors are in the palette. Looks like we're just about ready to paint. For the complete list of art tutorials that I have available, visit my website www.crystalbashera.com slash shop videos. Thanks for watching everybody and happy painting as always. See you the next time.